Hello, hello. Welcome, everybody. We are here for the next draw of Mixed Nationals Championship here in Denver. For this draw, we have Team Brundage with the red versus Team Siggins in yellow. I always appreciate when jacket colors match up, so the red sleeves to the red rocks is nice. Nice shot by Bree Weldon, lead for Team Siggins. Uh, Siggins is actually out of Arizona um, slash San Francisco, but Bree curls here as well. So another Denver curler on the ice along with her husband Sean Franey there you'll see them curling together pretty well here it is rumored that Mr. and Mrs. Smith was actually based off of their lives I got my co-commentator back, so I'm no longer alone. Well, uh, hello. I heard you this morning. You did great. Yeah, everybody learned a lot about our curlers. I know. I couldn't figure out if you were being factual or being funny. <laughs> You'll or never both. know. <laughs> I will say some of the facts were true. Uh, Lance and Claire are married and do have a cat named Lemur. Yes. However, they do not have a lemur named Potato. Where would they have housed that lemur? <laughs> Could be the reason they don't have it. Okay, we're on to second rocks here. I wasn't on this morning. Okay, so Team Brundage is actually using their corner guard, which is fantastic. I was watching um, US, the U21 Nationals a few weeks ago, and I noticed a trend in the junior curling that they're putting up center guards and drawing behind them even with hammer, and they're not even going ahead and using those corner guards much and that stuff. You know what? The game this morning was the exact same thing, actually. They didn't have any corner guard, or not any, but it was pretty frequent that... Um, Team Falco was curling under the center guards rather than putting up corners. <gasps> oh, no. Oh, Sean, Sean just misses. Not something that Sean does often with hits. He's a very strong hitter. Absolutely. So I'm wondering, though, like, because I don't know if we're seeing that too often at, like, the world men's and women's or up in the slams and people who are more frequently on tour. I don't know. I, I was saying this morning, you know, I frequently do the center guard and stay behind the center guard, but in league play, sometimes it makes sense because it's more just beat them to the button because we aren't as strong a curlers. But I was surprised to see it happen multiple times this morning. I definitely agree with you. I have found when I do use my corners, I don't really know how to use them. Cameron with a great shot here for Team Brundage. Curls right under that corner guard, pretty much doing exactly what we were just talking about. <laughs> I know. That, that was a great shot. Point of that is to leave the center wide open so that Team Brundage, who has hammer, can have the last shot at getting to the center. So now we're going to see Sean go ahead and sweep Claire's um, potential run back. It does look true and about to hit no. So let's see if we got 
Oh, that's a bummer. It doesn't make contact with anything in the house. It does leave a corner on the other side. And mm, I would think Jed's going to replace that guard. I could see him replacing it or even splitting the house. I think <sighs> both would work here because right now he has another corner guard. However, that is something I would call in league play. At this level, I'm not sure I would because it's much more likely that the opposing team could run back that yellow there. I do think so. And I right when you suggested that, you know, splitting the house, I was like, oh, that's a great idea. But then your point was spot on with running the yellow. Bella's back. looks a little heavy. She's probably coming. I'm not sure that's sticking. Mike's going to make sure. Ooh, oh, that's out. Out of the house completely. That unfortunate shot by Bella goes straight through, but makes it so that Team Brundage is still sitting two. Oh, sitting one. One? Sitting one, I believe. I think that back yellow might be second shot. I do know that an indicator of success is capitalizing on your misses, and we did see there that Team Brundage missed the opportunity to capitalize. And Claire is on it. One, two, there we go. Wow, look at that. Total change of momentum. Of momentum here, that's the word I was looking for. Total change of momentum where all of a sudden Siggins is now sitting too and Brundage has nothing in the house. Um, quick little check-in. We have a few other games going on right now. Over on sheet A, we have Yukic versus Falco. Uh, Falco currently undefeated, I believe. Um, yeah, that hasn't been updated. But then over on sheet C, we have Murray versus Johnson. And on sheet D, Yalawicki versus Jorgensen. So lots of good matches going on. We'll keep updating you throughout them and let you know what the scores are. But you can also follow along on Curling Zone. Yeah, every time I go and listen to you on the broadcast, I'm so impressed with how you can go ahead and pronounce these names so easily. <laughs> um, I maybe asked somebody yesterday how to pronounce all the names that I was unsure of because I definitely did not know how to say Yellow Wiki before. It was definitely paying off. Yep. I had to ask. I was trying to read through the different pools, and the B pool has a lot of difficult names, and it was uh, made me realize I needed to figure it out. But we're on to Skip's Rocks here. Uh, Siggins, Mike Siggins here, with his first calling Bree to the other side for this hit. I think he's just trying to hit this top red and make sure that it doesn't jam on the back yellow and I'm assuming he wants a little roll with this as well. You're spot on. They do want to kind of go ahead and have a whole bunch of those outside biters to do a nice force or steal here. Great shot by Mike. Looks like it might be rolling out. Sean trying to get it to curl back in, but unsuccessful there. So uh, Team Siggins now sitting one, but Brundage with the hammer. Unless someone really messes up, which I don't expect to happen with Jed and Mike, I'm guessing we're, we're going towards a blank. I agree. And both Jed and Mike are, you know, skilled, talented skippers, and they read line so well. So Definitely coming to Blanksville. Jed Stone is here. Cameron's cleaning. Sounds, lo looks like um, Bella is making sure that he's there to hold lines. He does want to go ahead and... Make sure that he sticks around and doesn't give Mike a chance to have that free draw. So Mike's going to go do the exact same thing and hit and stick. He would really like to do that far roll undercover. It would be a long way to roll, so I'd be surprised 
if he gets the roll at this thing. And with that ice, I think he's kind of going for, like, nose, third of the rock. Yeah, Mike's hoping for, you know, something big here. But realistically, he knows this is also going to a blank. Yep, got the roll. So Judd's going to be able to save a little bit of time here and do the automatic hit and roll in order to go ahead and break the end. And, you know, let's go move our way to the second end. Jed throwing his final stone, final stone of this first end here. Looks pretty good. Yep. Throwing an upweight hit to make sure that even if he got a large piece of it, he was going to roll out. So we have a blank here in the first end for Brundage and Siggins. Means Brundage will keep the hammer going into the second then at the moment we can go ahead and say this is advantage Brundage because you do want to go do a little bit of scoreboard management and, you know, score in the even ends. But I think that there was just a couple of misses on, you know, either team in order to go ahead and generate that blank. So right now we have Brundage at with a record of two and one. Siggins also with a record of two and one. So this is a pretty big game because those two teams, one of them could make it to the championship or to the semifinals and it might come down to a tiebreaker based on who wins this. Are we doing tiebreakers? Yes, so top two teams from each pool will go into the semifinals and if it is if there's a tie, it goes first to head-to-head -head score, I believe. Okay, so we are kind of more aligned with WCF, and we're not going to do actual tiebreaker games. And no. so it will be head-to-head -head and then potentially, you know, the last stone draw. Because from what I'm looking at the schedule, tomorrow morning, draw 8 is at 9 o'clock. And then I do see that semis aren't till 6. So we do potentially have an afternoon draw, but I do know the. Okay, I don't think, you're I don't, think I don't think we do a tiebreaker game. The tiebreaker is just head-to-head -head results. It's not okay. an actual game. So we are aligned with WCF and world practice. Great guard there by Lead May from Team Brundage. She's one of our junior curlers, correct? Yeah. Oh gosh, I think May is a sophomore now, freshman or sophomore. And then I I do believe Bella just recently had a birthday. I think she turned 18. Okay, Bree sliding out with her second rock, trying to come behind the guard or maybe tap up that guard there. Center guards are great when you're when you don't have hammer, but her first one isn't quite on the center line, so it wasn't as perfect as it could have been. Yeah, we're trying to carve it over, get some cover. Yep, looks like it's pretty wide open here, though. So this does give Jed the ability to take it out. However, he's not hes not being drawn into that hit game here. He's not following them. Instead, he's sticking with his corner guard and going for a draw behind it. That's a veteran move there. This team is the defending champion of this event, and they got to go, I think, to Scotland for Worlds this year, and we're middle of the pack, but it's such great experience for these young girls. Great shot here. Looks like it might be a little heavy, but it's sticking around just past T-line, so not shot rock, but in play at least. 
so now that we're spread a little wider, the chances of a blank have gone down quite a bit. You never know. It's not too hard to get that double. But Mike is calling for the freeze, and he wants to go ahead and kind of make sure that Team Brundage doesn't get the opportunity to score more than two. Ideally, we want to force... Sweeper saying it's a little hot. Let's hopefully it'll pick up its curl and we don't go ahead and, fla and flash through. Quick, up quick update on our other sheets. Over on sheet D, Yawuki and Jorgensen had a blank, so they are still tied at zero, just like our featured sheet here. On sheet C, Murray scored one, so the irritated chickens are up 1-0 over Team Johnson. And then over on sheet A, Falco just put up one point over T Team Yukich. Solid start for all teams. No one's, you know, showing that they're entering the the draw with a dominating lead. And so hopefully we get some close games. Jed is calling to go ahead and kind of clean up the front. And, you know, Cameron, if he's on board, is going to get the double and roll. Maybe he just goes ahead and hits and rolls and makes the next stone available for his next one. One. Okay, so we got the straight peel. And the peel means you go ahead and you take a rock out of play and lose your own. For statistics, we would go ahead and say that last shot was a two out of five. Mike's calling for them to go ahead and replace the guard and have it kind of block up the center line. He wants to go ahead and make that run back even harder for Cam on his next one. Okay, life's all tight. Okay, well, well, life, life's good now. No, 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 no. So Cam goes ahead and has the double there that um, hopefully he'll go ahead and roll over towards that yellow stone. I'm not sure if the triple's there. I don't see a pretty right angle in order to, you know, assume there's an automatic triple there. Sweeper's on it immediately, though, so I'm thinking, yeah, it was little inside, so didn't get a double anywhere. Unfortunate outcome for Cameron, but did remove one of the reds, and with that roll did make it, well, so Siggins is now sitting one. Yeah. Ooh, I don't know. I think, me, I think I'm maybe thinking two. These two. I think they're two still. I do see, though, that that draw path on the right as we view it is kind of messy for Jed, and so he's going to have to start deciding how he's going to clean up the end and give himself a shot. Clear stone is here. I think they want to go ahead and eliminate that red stone, move it to the center, and keep that junk in the front. And as I was saying yesterday, that top house is, you know, that control zone. And we can see that Team Siggins is controlling the top of the house, and they've kind of really blocked off the draw path on the right side as we see it. Jed's going ahead and calling for Bella to do the hit and roll undercover to go ahead and be under the guards and sit shot. Bella goes and focuses in her pre-shot routine and delivers this hit and roll. Cameron's on it to hold the line up and down. It's got to be close. Don't hit it too thick. Oh, beauty. Nice shot. Look at that roll. Oh, that was beautiful. Perfect roll there. That was a team shot. Under the guard, but also shot rock. That was beautiful. Very well done by Team Brundage. Mm -hmm. 
Mike wants to go ahead and um, kind of dominate the option and split the house before you know Jed gets the chance to do it. I think Sean may be saying, hey, let's do the run back, which would have some a lot of downside if they do miss it. But if you do it really well, there is a lot of an advantage there. He would go back and drop, you know, clog up the front in that drop half again. Sean's holding line. It's curling really good. Hopefully we get nose. No, definitely not nose, but should have held it just a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Not the worst though. I mean that you know the takeout on that yellow or on that red is definitely there with a run back. Um oh wait, let's see. Yeah, Siggins can go run Siggins that yellow. Siggins could right run there that yellow and back. Potentially get shot rock out at this point. Um, so now Brundage is taking the opportunity to split the house. One thing I love about this mixed event is that we do go ahead and get a combination of our national team athletes and then our top club curlers in the field. Like we've got Team Sobering who has been to nationals. Then you've got Team Falco who has Lance and Claire who are on national teams. And then, you know, we've got Nina Roth who retired from competitive curling a few years ago to stay at home and focus on her young children. And now she's back with fellow national team athlete Croy Nuremberger, and they've teamed up and are doing really well. And we've also seen yes! that Mike Siggins and... They're dominant on the club national circuit as well. Yeah, Mike here with his first shot. So we're on to Skip's Rocks here. Siggins going for the hit on that red. Didn't quite get under. So Mike definitely has the ability to get there. Claire trying to push it, though. Now now calling Sean on. Looks like it's going to be really Watch close. Watch the roll. Get it, get it, get it. Great roll. Great sweep by Sean. Beauty. Didn't roll under quite enough. It is pretty open, so Judd can get to it, and that's exactly what he's going to try to do here. It would go ahead and become a potentially jam on that red one and help Team Siggins not give up too big of an end. So working in both sides of a favor, Judd getting the opportunity to go to the other side of the house. Siggins potentially set up for a jam. Cameron's got to hold the line here. We don't want to hit it too thick. Oh, it might be over curling a little bit and beyond that front one. I think if they get a roll. They got it. Oh, didn't, nice. Didn't get a roll, so it is open for Siggins to follow him down and do the same or to freeze on it. Let's see who Brundage has. Yes. Hammer. Hammer. This is Siggins' last shot. If uh, Siggins doesn't go ahead and make this perfect, there is an opportunity for Brundage to get three, potentially. You know, we might see our first crooked, or crooked letter of the draw. Mike going back down to get ready for his throw. Um, also, I don't know about you, but I really like the cacti on the back of their jackets. I think it's very cute. 
definitely, you know, representing Arizona and Colorado within the um, uniforms. And did you know that Mike actually owns Pasta Brioni and is a chef, along with being an accountant, multi-talented person. I did not know that, but now I feel like I would like to him to make me dinner. Yes. <laughs> Ooh, great nice shot by Mike. Double. Oh, oh, calling for them to stop sweeping. Yeah, he wanted he, to he, end up shot rock. He then. wanted to end up shot rock and wasn't sure if that was going to happen. I'm not sure he did. It doesn't matter. Judd's going to come in and remove it, which makes me think that that yellow's probably shot. Judd's coming down on this to hit it. Stick or a little roll in for two. More on Pasta Brioni. It is an amazing <laughs> Italian restaurant in Old Scottsdale and a huge supporter of the Coyotes Curling Club. And if you've got the opportunity to go head down to their summer spiel, Hotter Than Hell, I definitely recommend it. They have a pool party usually on the Saturdays, and, po- and Mike is often attending the grill, and they just do a really... <laughs> amazing job as a summer spiel. Judd's final skip stone, the second end, is off and they're just cleaning it. Oh, it's hanging out there. Let's curl it in. We gotta stick around to get that second point. Ooh. So, let's see. Are we gonna need a measure? Bree's saying it's yellow. I think we have a steal, ladies and gentlemen. (laughs) Yep, we do have a steal of one on shoot B for Team Siggins. Beginning of the game, those wide... Uh, those wide takeouts can be a little sticky. Checking curling zone in order to go ahead and see if there's been any updates on the other sheets yet. And looks like in the Yalawicki Jorgensen game in the second end, Yalawicki got one to take the lead 1 0. There was a blank in the second in the Murray-Johnson game, and so Johnson retains the hammer, but they're down 0-1 with Murray in the lead. And on sheet A, looks like there might still be a couple stones left, so we'll update you in a little bit. And Bree's first stone is away now, and looks like they're going for a guard. Let's see if we got enough ice and patience to go and have that pretty center guard. I do wonder if her stone is just, ooh, may or may not be biting. Let's see if the skip, how the skips decide. Jed ignores it and goes for the corner guard. Definitely a veteran move. Um, yes, we have a blank on sheet A, so Team Falco is still up 1-0 over Yukich, and Team Yalawiki is up 1-0 over Jorgensen. So Mike's calling for the draw behind. You know, he doesn't have hammer, so he wants to go ahead and keep the activity in the center and, you know, potentially get another opportunity for a steal. The game between Yalawiki and Jorgensen over in Sheet D is a pretty important one. Uh, both teams are currently one and two, so if... Yeah, you, you got to keep your play out. Got to keep your keep going strong because you don't know what's going to happen. You know, Falco's 3-0 and right now, but... Roth is only two and one, so if Roth loses another and Yalawiki wins, it's a big turnaround for them. So important game here. 
Bree seconds down, does a really nice draw behind the guard. So I do wonder if there's something going on with her first stone. And leads tend to have potentially mismatched stones. And so they'll have to work together as a team in order to manage them and set themselves up for success. Bella's on the sweep. And it looks like they are hoping for top four or a freeze, but definitely want to be behind the guard. Making it tricky for Team Siggins to do that run back. There is separation, so there's it's open. Yep, Siggins is going for the freeze or corner guard. <laughs> or, I'm sorry, corner freeze or on the button, but they're drawn in. <laughs> Uh, I don't think so. I think he's throwing like a hack weight here and hitting that red. Oh, look at the look at the broom. That's yep, not a draw. All right. Isn't it nice when there's two of us here? Oh, very nice. <laughs> don't have to spend two hours talking to myself. I want when I was down in Phoenix, I once commentated the entire desert ice bond spiel in an office. Oof, no. Ooh, okay, interesting. Definitely, I'm, I'm not sure that's what they were going for. I think they were trying to hit that red, and Sean was a little down weight, so it overcurled, and instead of taking out that red, just kind of replaced his yellow. So not ideal, but the red is still visible until Jed comes in on top of it here. <laughs> While it was a miss, it wasn't the worst miss. And there's just another, you know, rock in the house for Siggins to go ahead and use and mess up and shrink the scoring area. The Brundage stone is coming in nicely. It does go ahead and they are now sitting one and three. Mike's trying to figure out where's the best placement in order to go ahead and force this right now. Sean Stone is going in order to draw in. He only did a little bit of an extension here, so hopefully it will glide nicely, catch the curl, and go right to the button. Looks pretty good to me. They're staying close. It looks like it might be a little heavy, but I think he's gonna catch this back red, but probably roll a little. Yeah, so um, Brundage now sitting shot, but Team Siggins sitting two, three, four. So not in bad shape. Yeah, I think Siggins just wants to go get that red in jail and uh, so that couldn't go ahead and but the Siggins does have that um, risky raise on their own guard. I say risky because it has to be pretty precise. So Team Brundage Stone is coming in and oh it wrecks on the guard, but it takes away the raise. It does leave shot stone wide open through a tight port, but it's possible. Draw paths are pretty messy right now. Um, let's see. Okay, it looks like he's calling for control weight. Yep, Hits. going through the port. He was indicating, oh, there we go. Back up to normal weight. That makes a lot more sense. I think you need to throw quite a bit here to hold it straight on that line. Um, but I also know Sean is a very strong sweeper and should be able to hold that rock for Claire. Sean jumping on it early, though, makes me a little worried. Yeah, we are, they're jamming. They're wrecking oh. on that guard. I think they're removing, ooh, yeah, removing it completely as well as the shooter makes it so that they're rocks are now much more visible so not the best outcome there for Siggins. So Jed has the opportunity of potentially taking out both those yellows and you know cleaning up that jail situation and removing that pocket there that they've really kind of created amongst themselves. 
Yeah, Jed taking an extra second here to look, thinking through his options. Um, as a reminder, Jed, Team Brendage does have hammer. We're only on vice stones here. Still, still got a few to go. I think they did come to the conclusion and are kind of just deciding on what weight to throw. Yeah, going to hit this center yellow. I like that option for them. Um, if they get it a little bit on the outside, I think they have a really good chance to double them and also have their shooter stick. I think that's what they're going for. Hold that line, Cameron. Not quite the right line, too far outside, so jammed, or I guess kind of nicked that back one rather than actually taking anything, or taking everything out. So Brundage still sits one in the center, but it is wide open, and Siggins is going to try and get rid of it here. So while Siggins is likely to go eliminate Shot Stone, it would go ahead and kind of set up a pocket for Team Brundage to go ahead and curl into, and so they would still be able to recover and score this end. Patience is the key, waiting for this downwind hit to curl. And luckily they got a nice roll, and so they didn't go ahead and set up a pocket. Well executed, and Patience has paid off for Team Siggins. Jed does say that there is a double opportunity to go ahead and eliminate some of those yellow stones. May holding the line. Ooh, Bella's second shot looks pretty good here. <gasps> oh no, it's curling quick. We may not get the roll. Not the right roll, but definitely getting... Ooh. Removed the shot. They removed two of them in the back. Let's play that. Definitely move some things around, but I would still say Siggins is looking in a pretty, looking in pretty good shape here. Sitting one, two, they don't have hammer, but they're looking good for either a steal or, or a force of one. Not a bad outcome for them at all. Though this has also, the momentum has shifted about five times, so I do not <laughs> promise that that's what's about to happen. <laughs> I think I'd really kind of like to see, I'm not sure if he's drawing or not, but if he's drawing, I'd like to see like top eight underneath the guard down wait a little bit Bree moves towards the center so I think they are trying to go ahead and get play back to the center instead of the wings make it harder to get to the button they're staying close but not hopping on it I think it might yeah we're gonna go oh, it looks a little back eight, back deep. 12. opposing team hopping on it to try to sweep it farther back still third shot though so Siggins is Sitting one, two, three, but the every single stone in the house right now is behind T line. I know he wouldn't do it, but wouldn't we really love to see that around the world hit right there? <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. Eliminate all three of those yellows. <laughs> that I would, mean that yeah. would be the circus shot that we'd probably see like Nicholas Adeen go for. Oh, and he'd make it too, I bet. <laughs> Love him. Hey, Nick, if you're watching. I know. Nick just won Worlds, and uh, Canada and Team Gushu took uh, silver. I saw that. I was watching all of the uh, shots of the day and was laughing at how about 99% of them were just so absurd that I wouldn't even think of calling them. 
so one of the things that Team Adine does to practice in the off ice is they play pool, which goes and like makes it so they you know get and understand the gear effect. They go ahead and see all these different crazy angles. I hung out with them at a pool once. <laughs> we were in Vegas. I was at Worlds for Vegas. That was so fantastic. Uh, Jet's shot, not quite what he was hoping. He was definitely trying to go farther inside. Bree's signaling for that shot that I was looking for, but Mike wants it to be open. Hmm. Okay, so this is interesting. Jet's shot, which... I really thought was a bit of a given for him. He threw it a little heavy and, and a, maybe a little outside and that combination just did not work for him. Um, looks like Siggins is still one, two, three. Mike with his last shot though, Brundage does have hammer. So let's see what happens mike's gonna try to put something in the front of the house to block jed's draw path to the center and that way hopefully if jed does get in there he's only getting one jed does have guards up front that he could utilize to do that soft tap though to get one I do like this weight choice by Mike. He's not going ahead and overthrowing it. And sweepers and the vice are communicating, and it just goes right Ooh, where nice Mike shot. wanted it. Nice shot for Mike. I think he did want it to be a few inches higher so that if Jed hit it, he's not going to be shot. Where he is right now, I think Jed could either be shot or second but a few inches higher would have made it so that Siggins was more likely to steal. Yes. Because I'm, oh no, we're going through maybe just like a downweight back house little tap there for, with that ice. Or maybe he thinks it's going to curl and go Ooh, like and he's going to, to the, the right side as we look at it of mm -hmm. the yellow to yeah, get the I think other side right. of the button. Maybe that's the draw path he's calling. I think you're right. I don't know if we've seen any draws this far in yet. So this is definitely, you know, smart on Siggins to go ahead and change up the paths. That's something we haven't seen in a little while. Definitely need precision. They do have the opportunity to do plan B if it over curls. And you know, he does have the option to do kind of like that inside tick and roll. Ooh, this does look really good. He figured out that drop path, and it's looking great for Jed. Right in. Oh, beautiful shot for Jed. Brundage scores one point here and brings the score to one to one here after the third end. On sheet D, we do see a score of Yellow Wiki up 2-2-0 two, two, after the third. I think I should just go in curling zone instead of trying to read the scoreboard across the Nah, board. I like standing up. <laughs> Reading the scoreboard is faster. Gets me more, gets me the results faster in real time. I'm still waiting for the other sheets to finish their third end, though. But going into our fourth end here on sheet B with Brundage versus Siggins all tied up. I do like hearing the humming in the warm room. Definitely looks like people are coming in order to go ahead and uh, take advantage of Dean Gemmel's offer of buying your first round. And so that we can go ahead and get the chatter here. So still two o'clock draw for a little bit. So if you're kind of like me and having an end day at work and decide to come to the curling club instead, I think Dean's offer, buying your first round, is still open. 
Well, with that, I have to sign off for the day. I got a, uh, well, truthfully, a happy hour I'm going to. Um, <laughs> but I will leave you in Rebecca's very capable hands. And I will be back with you Sunday morning for the championship game. We'll see if one of these teams is there. Otherwise, I think uh, Simon might be coming over now to help out Rebecca. Who And Simon will also be here tomorrow to talk you through those games with his co-commentator, Elliot. Um, ooh, pretty good shot there. Looks like we're going to end up... Ooh, are we overcurling? Ooh, ooh, little, little over curl. Bit. Didn't stick on center, but the weight was very nice. Okay, I have to leave. Good have curling, fun. everyone. Enjoy. All right, Bria is going ahead and drawing behind into the house behind the corner guard. She's struggling a little bit with this first stone. We've seen it being heavy in the last few ends. I hope they can go ahead and pick up on that. Joining me here in the booth, we've got Simon, who is definitely competitive curler on our club level scene and goes and plays with the likes of uh, our Falco guys. <laughs> So Bree Stone is heavy and is back 12. I wonder if the team is going to go ahead and regroup and um, recognize that that stone is just not her friend. Well, she's a lead, so they're going to probably give her the stones that they don't like anyways. Yes, I definitely think so. This one's over curling just a little bit. Taking it out, so back-to-back -back misses. I think that we are going to see definitely a little bit of a different non-traditional end forming here. Draw around the middle. Hmm. Sit so two would be a good spot for Siggins. Hmm. Yes, and top 12 in order to go ahead and control the end and control the top house. Claire is on it, so it might be a little light. Yep. They definitely need to manage the line and the weight. We don't want to, you know, they're not going to want to move that guard around too much and put it in. Some real good sweeping from Claire. Hmm. Yeah, she's talented, that's for sure. Perfect draw in. Just a hair of an overcurl. Should leave the inside open for him. Um, Jed's electing just freeze down instead of play the top, which I would agree with. Top's just going to get rid of the stone, but you're you just leaving it open to get a pretty easy deuce. So. Yeah, I think it's a little early in the end to consider the tap. Weight looks really, really close. Maze. Gonna go carve it in, get that freeze. It's all there. Curl over. Just a hair heavy from Cam. Hmm. Where is it? Where you gotta go for line? Oh. Yeah. Siggins with hammer is happy to go ahead and just throw another one in there. Go ahead and clog things up make it for a messy house and get a chance for a multiple score. Well, I don't think he wants to go super messy. <laughs> that would be a little contradictory, but another one on top woods have been in a pretty good power position. Um, could have elected to peel off the guard, could have elected to go after the red, but I like this call from Siggins. I do too. I don't know if this line's just getting them or the speed's changed this end, but this is a couple that we've seen heavy. Yeah. Sean will want that one. <laughs> Jed sees that pocket there and wants to go and have Cam freeze into it. It is down. It's curling a lot. And 
soon. Like, it wasn't even at the hog line before it started curling. So definitely just light there. Staggered guard is definitely not what Team Brundage wants to see right now. Important shot for Sean here. Just got to put this up. Mm, top four. Mm, even top eight. Good. You just can't leave that pocket mm, unprotected. Mm -hmm. What? To really control the end here. Mm -hmm. Here you go. I like this. So, a bit of an extension, so it might run later. The weight does look close. It is curling in right now. Careful of the over curl, but it does look like it's going to freeze right up to that stone with that button area. Yeah, unfortunately heavy again there for Sean. He won't be happy with that result. Leaves Brundage and out. You can still corner freeze. Uh, starts to get where there's a lot of rocks in play, but most of them are behind the tee, so you can't be too worried about them. A little, a little bounce off, push that back. So the button's a pretty good shot. It'd be hard to get rid of uh, in one shot for Siggins. This is a couple missed opportunities there, unfortunately. Bella is trying to go ahead and do that down weight, hit and roll. May's got to hold the line so that we don't crash on that guard. Cam goes ahead and steps in, recognizing that we're in a little bit of trouble here. Just uh, over curl. Uh, I got the throw on the slice on <laughs> Tuesday. It can definitely tell you that if you don't have the right weight, you will lose it. It's very weight dependent. It's exactly what you'd want from a championship guys. Reward the good throws and punish the bad ones. Oh, I think it's Lauren who's here as our head ice tech, and she makes some amazing ice. Yeah, her and her team have done a good job so far this year. Good. So Claire's now going to go ahead and draw through the port. Switch, go, girl, retreat, retreat, Kate. Wait looks close. On and off. Gonna go ahead and wait for it to catch the curl. Curling over. I think we're past the guard. Beautiful weight control and patience here is shown by Claire and Sean. Yeah, it's a good shot. Um, I Still leaves some options for, for Jed. Um, I do think that... Get less. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I like more of the coming in off the center line. You could play a hit on that back one and roll under those staggered yellows that they just have. You could possibly be shot after that as well. Um, he's electing to hit the top one shit. I don't mind. So if he rolls to the right, he'd be in a power position with a lot of catchers. But, it's getting time where uh, Team Brunners needs to uh, make something shot. happen. Yep. I do think that they need to get on the sweep. It's going to catch a curl. You saw them jump it right there. Yeah, they're sweeping for curl. It's actually ran pretty good. <clears throat> Didn't quite curl enough for them. <clears throat> Team Siggins is now sitting three. So would you aim to guard the port there, or are you going to just keep putting them in there seeing that uh, Team Bridges is not on their precision game today? I don't think I'd ever guard the port. It doesn't do much for you. Uh, you always have the ability to curl around the okay. red rock that's sitting there on the right side of the house, and you could easily, with the way it's curling, get around it and sit on top of that back yellow. So then you want to keep that open so you have an ability to go and slash that out if he ever makes that shot. Mm -hmm. yep, yep, keep it going. 
Although it looks like they're going to end up oh, probably oh, covering that spot. Oh, the way this works. Oh. So. No. Uh, just a hair short. Mm. Won't be happy not to get in there for four shot. Mm. I wouldn't mind that. Uh, what would that be? The intern draw, you know, hit through the port. Probably what, like a firm. Uh, I don't think you can throw it that hard. Uh, if you do, you're most likely just rolling off the top of that yellow. Okay. And, and spilling out. You probably want something a little softer, like a control to be able to move it around. Uh, I mean, I'm bored. Okay. Um, you want to stick around. In fact. If you sit dead nose on it and just tap that yellow back, uh, then it's a catcher for you later on. Um, so I think the less amount of weight here, the better. You're not going to get the double. So uh, higher weight doesn't really give you too much more. Okay. Jumping into the game midway through here, I'm not entirely sure what Jed's... Uh, lines look like but that, that that to me looks like hmm, controlish hmm, ice but, hmm. i think so that definitely that down weight cam's prepared to hold the line we don't want it to cross center too soon we gotta get it past that guard it's tight it's a disaster. <laughs> That's unlucky. <laughs> yeah, you don't want to make those shots for your opponent. And he did leave the draw path open. And so kind of moving his guard there was not an advantage. I think Jed wants that one back a little more than Sean would want his back. Well, as things move down the lineup, it always, the misses become bigger and bigger. Um, chance for Mike to really put the screws on him. Um, if he gets something half under top eight, uh, Judd's going to be in a tough spot. This is a big game for uh, for this pool. So. Sagan's getting the opportunity to do the practice draw and add more pressure to Team Brendich and uh, potentially break this, you know, game wide open early going into the break. Got to go sweep for distance here. I see Sean knifing it, so they like the weight. It is a good guard, but doesn't go and add to... Uh, be an uh, influence on the scoreboard. It does prevent the run back to an extent. Mm. I don't know if Jed will take it anymore. He'll probably mm, at least think about it. But it's either that or it's to draw around. Mm. Yeah, raising that guard into the yellow on the left side of our screen is tempting. But as we tell the juniors, winners draw. <laughs> Cam's kind of thinking we got to go and move things around and eliminate the damage and keep themselves in the game. Well, either shot will do it for you. It's just it's entirely a field thing, whatever one you want to throw, mm -hmm. whichever line you're more confident on. Mm -hmm. As a front of house player, I usually like to draw in this situation because it keeps the sweepers involved. Mm -hmm. Makes it more of a team shot. Mm -hmm. Lose a hit out of hand. So out of our eight players on the ice, who would you go ahead and would you want sweeping for you on a shot like this? Uh, I don't know too many. Uh, I've never played with any of the Brundish guys. Mm -hmm. 
played against him, um, but I mean, I, I played with Sean a bunch. He's a he's a great sweeper. Uh, I could tell you that I 100% wouldn't want Mike Siggins sweeping for me. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's been more of a career back end player. Yeah. <laughs> so opting for the downweight hit, tap back the red, use the yes. use the yellows as a catcher. I like the call to do this down weight. Mm. Again on it. It's unfortunate. Just a, he made the shot. Just a little bit of a missed line call. Mm. Worried that it was gonna. Mm. That they were gonna lose it. Overswept. Mm. I do think that Mike's just going to kind of do that, follow him down and draw and freeze on that red stone that Jed just put there. I don't even think he needs to freeze on it. He's just he's just drawing over that direction. Um, I don't think he can actually curl over that much. You'd, you'd most likely be on top of your yellows back there. Um, the shot works. He just threw a draw, so he's, he's probably comfortable with it. You could have also played the hit and roll off the... Off the red on the left, but if you're ever wide, you could, <laughs> you yeah. could ruin your whole end. So. At this point, we are sitting four, going for five, but you don't really want to mess up that four. Yeah, for what's been a tight game so far, this one really blows it open. It's close. All we got to do is manage the line now. Curling it over. Shot for Mike there. Hmm. We there got five. a handful hmm. on the board. I'm hoping that Team Brundage is going to go collect themselves in the break and come back strong and get themselves back in the game. Checking on the scores, we see that Sheet A is at three to one. Jukic Jukic is topping uh, Falco there. Team Murray is 8 and 0 over Johnson. And we got Jorgensen at 3 to 2 over Yellow Wiki. Can keep you here over on sheet D as it's the only game that's not currently on their break for a little bit. You had a couple of five this uh, this draw. You know, Team Murray got one, then Team Siggins got one. I think um, Arizona and those fives are kind of a hand in hand right now. I haven't had a chance to watch too many of their games so far this weekend. Just one other. I don't. I don't remember them getting any other fives. Have they had fives? <laughs> I don't know, but I think USA in general is lucky with those fives. <laughs> so Team Jorgensen is going ahead and hoping to draw behind their center guard. Yeah, this is a pretty big game on D. Um, three losses essentially effectively will take you out of it. Um, two losses, you're still in the running. Uh, could possibly come down to draw shot challenge. So this is kind of an all or nothing for both of these teams. Super's indicating that it's hot. Well, I think they're playing the lightweight dig here. Mm -hmm. Oh, Skipper likes it. It's a good shot. Mm -hmm. We'll see how much Greg wants to 
mix things up. And he's not all in, he's just, which is probably smart on his part. Just play the open hit and take it till six. Nothing bad ever happened with hammering six. Yep, hammering the even ends is always a good thing. Melissa Turbo with the sweep, still the best name in all of curling. Did you know that she is moving to Denver and coming this year? And so she's going to be curling out of probably here and Rock Creek. Oh, I was no. talking to her wife the other day, and we're definitely excited to have them join us here in the Mopat. Or, sorry, we're Maka region. Yeah, I was like, <laughs> I'm yeah. getting my clubs mixed up. No, that's great. Um, yeah, she'll happy to have her around. She's a lovely person. It's good to grow the community. Just playing hits back and forth. See if anyone can ever get under that corner. Or Sorry, that center guard. The potential for a blank is still open in this game as both teams are kind of hitting back and forth and nice roll there. It does look like it might be out, which is why Yalowicki is sing signaling to draw top house here. Yep, and you have a, again, you kind of have a choice. You could try and leave the center alone mm -hmm. and peel off the guard. Mm -hmm. uh, it's ensuring, essentially ensuring that you're gonna mm -hmm get to sit but, uh, let them come around put some pressure on so mm -hmm. there is a birthday on Michigan's team today as I was coming in for the draw I helped um, someone bring in some cakes so that the team Jorgensen can celebrate after the draw Hopefully with a win. Hey, <laughs> fingers mm -hmm. crossed. It's early. This game's tight. It's possible. Uh, do we think we're going to stick to this game, or are we going to go head back to our feature game on Sheet B now that they're back from the break? We'll head back. Um, we'll After just, this end. We'll just let the end play itself out. Mm -hmm. They're only just throwing mm -hmm. lead nice. rocks. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, lead on the other game. Yep. Mm -hmm. Plenty of time, no reason to panic. Mm. Sweepers are off, A clean there. Rolls over, leaving the jam possibility there if uh, Yellow Wiki doesn't go and have, you know, that clean pick of the stone. Uh, if you pick it, you're never, you're never keeping your shooter in unless it's very True. down weight. Mm -hmm. yeah. So just wrong term by me. We. I Ideally, just play I think the, it's hit and roll, right? Well, I think you just play nose and you double them off and then it's not an option anymore. Mm -hmm. You don't have to worry about the catcher. Mm -hmm. And this is why you're the competitive curler and I am not. <laughs> Just do what they tell me to do. <laughs> I, I do like playing front end for that reason. Staying close. Uh, gets a good roll. Mm -hmm. Exactly as you said. 
Um, score of the Murray match, someone was asking. I, I'm not sure what it is at this moment, but they were up 8 nothing. Hmm. So they're they're in complete control of that game. Hmm. It was the fourth end break. But, uh, you can see now that they're back from it. Hmm. We'll span across here in a little bit and give you a look. Hmm. According to Curling Zone, you are correct. It is 8 to O. Come back from the break. And Curling Zone is never wrong. Hmm. <laughs> Except for all the times that it is. <laughs> hey, we are a volunteer-run community. <laughs> volunteer-run community. <laughs> yep. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Teams continue to play the hit game here. <laughs> no one can quite get that roll underneath. I mean, honestly, <laughs> if I'm... Well, Wiki, I don't want to roll underneath. I want to keep this open. I want to keep it to the side. Uh, Jorgensen's probably the one that wants to get under the guard. Secure the blank. Hmm. We'll take hammer into six. Hmm. Span of rock across. Hmm. To our feature sheets. Hmm. Right. I'm going to go take a break and grab something to eat. I missed lunch at work today. And <laughs> came right to commentating in the game. So I'll be back in a few minutes. <laughs> uh, I think you're just going to see Mike and company just keep this as, as clean as they possibly can moving forward. Make it real hard to, for the Brundage team to get anything going, anything to hide behind. So. A little lucky to dead stuff it there. Cam's gonna get asked to curl around the corner guard now. <laughs> Try and sit too. Forts are just coming up short. Mm. Uh, weight control has definitely been kind of a theme of an issue in this game. Mm. Don't know if the warmer weather today, we're, we're up in the mid 70s, is the warmest day we've had in the, the event so far. It's got conditions in there just a little bit different. Mm. Claire with an attempted takeout, unfortunately a little wide. Mm -hmm. I think those are ones that if you came back to it, you would you could have that talk or discussion as a team and make the understanding that if you were to peel off that yellow and miss inside, that's the way to miss that shot. Uh, those guards aren't doing any favors for you. Just get rid of it. Mm -hmm. So another chance here for Brunyus to sit too. <laughs> yep. Good stone. I feel like you'll see Mike take after the, the open one here. 
Yeah, I'm saying this year, you you can afford to be inside on this. Honestly, if you threw it and were inside, you have a chance of wrecking on the red that they just threw. You can get it that way too. So you're gonna miss, miss inside. Hmm. This line looks a lot better though. Hmm. Mission accomplished by Claire. Get rid of red stones. Just try and draw around the other corner here. Mm -hmm. Another great shot. Mm -hmm. Two good ones. Mm -hmm. Keep them in the end. Mm -hmm. Important to get that one a little deeper too. Uh, makes the run back a little harder. Mm -hmm. Kind of puts Mike in that situation of which one he wants. Mm -hmm. It's like he's looking to slash the red. <laughs> I don't. I think his thought process here is if he slashes over the top, he his yellow goes right back onto his red, which is you know a great result. <clears throat> um, if he's a little wide, he might be able to pick out mm, the red on the other side, um, and then has a short run mm, on his last. Mm, a little bit of risk involved in this. Mm. You're throwing the other run back, you open it up, and I think the worst you could do is two. I think a miss on this could bring in three into play. Does get all three moving. It's not a horrible result, it opens up. You're thing that hurts them is that one little biter hung around. Hmm. Mm -hmm. I f I f yeah, I feel like Jed's really only move here is to come around that mm, yellow guard again. Hmm. They've signaled to it a few times. I'm surprised that um, they're still talking options. I bet he did go ahead and make a decision. be interesting to see did we have one big end followed up by a fall of another big end that could be fun well, we'll certainly keep our stream here <laughs> yeah go ahead and keep us going keep yourself in the game i know that team brundage is definitely going to want to at least score two this and order to keep them their chances alive We must be close. Waiting for the curl there. Sliding in nicely under cover into the guard. It's a good shot from Jed. And I think you'll see Mike try and take on this double. Ensure that you're removing rocks. Um, the draw down is a little risky. The double that he just looked at on the side, I don't think does anything other than just removes two. I don't think that's the way to go. So we're going to do an inside out hit for the double here. We should get some action on the stones because he's going that inside out direction, I think. Well, the difficult part with this is the rotation of that rock will gear off of the object rock. 
which usually will make it come further down. Hmm. So it might be harder for him to catch the other two. He might miss underneath it. Hmm. Um, while if you were coming the other direction, it's a flatter roll. But you don't get the same level of action off the stone. And our stones are unfortunately not the liveliest. Hmm. Um, if you were throwing on the championship set or something like that, you might you might see good action off of it. This does look close. Hmm. One, two. Good result. Make sure you remove two. Hopefully that's not biting on for him. It's tough to say from this angle. Hmm. It might be. It depends on the accuracy of the paint. Yeah, I'm wearing the cameras for that matter. Hmm. Yeah, that too. <laughs> More importantly, is it, it makes Jed have to make a pretty good shot here hmm, to make, get his three. Hmm, um, Maybe we get to see some officiating action with a biter bar. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> can be hopeful. <laughs> I'll stay reserved in my excitement. <laughs> I'm officiating on ice next end, and you know when you get that moment to go ahead and... Um, Use the biter bar, measure. It's a little nerve-wracking, but at least it gives you something to do and you get the chance to warm up a little bit. So is the hard part. It's tough to just stand around out there. I don't know how skips do it. Oh, I would definitely don't either. But I do like on ice officiating. Get to keep track of the games. It's curling over pretty quickly here. Is it going to stick around? Bree says not in my house. It's a good try. Hmm. We'll, we'll take a look at this one or not. Hmm. Doesn't look like it. They all agree it's something. Yeah, so. Two points, keeping two. Uh, Team, yes. Bre team yes. Brendage in Hard. the game. Hard. We're at a score Hard. of 6-3 oh, after the fifth. <laughs> Over on sheet A, we have a score of 4-1, Yukich leaving, leading over Team Falco. Team Johnson, all the way from Alaska, got on the board to go, and um, Murray retains her lead at 8-1. And on sheet D, it looks like there was a, a blank in the fifth, and they'll be wrapping up the sixth. Pretty soon, the score is at 3-2. Right. Well, we watched the blank in the fifth, so. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> right, another direction we can see what the houses look like. It's wide open. Hmm. The end's just starting for the sixth on the sheet A. Hmm. Murray's just going to be peeling everything. Hmm. Or at least attempting to. Hmm. Oh, no. Hmm. Solid flash there. That's surprising. Good couple of rocks in play here on GD. Hmm. Let's see how many they have left. Hmm. And skip stones here on D, so we'll just hang around for a sec. Hmm. Sitting two, maybe three. I think just two, though. Hmm. I'm just looking to curl down into the pile right now. Hmm. Got to go. You don't want to leave this one too high, and so that. Got to curl. Curl. 
If I don't overhead, I couldn't tell you if that eliminated anything or does anything. I'm gonna go sneak over and see what it says. Red did get second shot with that one. That yellow that we see that looks like two isn't completely touching the forefoot. Easy on the road right now. Whoa, whoa. Entirely sure if they're trying to come all the way around this to sit one two, or if they're just trying to corner it. Uh, if you give her corner it without bumping in a shot, it's really good. Makes it pretty much impossible to get two. Both sleepers on it. I don't know if they'd be happy for that result, although isn't it a steal this end for Jorgensen? Yeah, they're, that's what they're shooting for. Um, steal's not really in play with the way the rocks are set up. Uh, they'll be very happy with force, which I think is what they're, they're going to get here. I think they'll see... Uh, just a little tap on the red. Just move it a little bit. And become shot. I think what that stone that they just threw prevented was the, the split to try and sit two that way. Murray on sheet C is calling for another takeout. Looks like they eliminated an Alaska stone. Got smiles over there, so always good to see that. Hopefully Team Alaska stays positive and keeps himself in the game. That kind of caught him there. <clears throat> I don't know if it picked or what. Mm -hmm. So it looks like a steal of one. Mm -hmm. Back to our other game on sheet B. We see Mike Cullen to go ahead and eliminate these red stones. Not a bad result for Sean there. Probably a little wider than he would want to be, but important thing is to clean up the middle. Um, only thing that really hurts you here from Sagan's perspective is the, is the steal. So. Yeah, the, I mean, they understand there's one guard up front, um, but that's so high up and on this ice. I mean, it's, it's essentially an invisible stone. That guard is only guarding another guard, and currently there is none there. So, um, so that's why I don't think you'll see... I wouldn't think, expect them to throw in here on purpose because uh, it's just it's not going to be under any sort of cover It'd be easily picked out hoping for the line and did go ahead and guard something under cover so looks like Brendan just trying to go generate something here <laughs> I love that interaction just then Mike Indicating maybe do you want to come around everything and the entire front end saying no. <laughs> uh, rightfully so. Um, so 
Yep, just the kind of a mm, control board weight. Mm, get rid of that stone, stuff really danger rock. Mm, again, just ignore the one up top. Mm, if you hit that one, it's not a bad result, but. Mm, mm, Sean's holding in the line, making sure that we aren't going to go get a nose on this one. They don't need any guards up front. It's a good shot. Mm. Even All clears up the middle even more. Now that draw path around the left side is even more open. It's a good result. Yeah. Would you ever try? Nope. That double on the side doesn't even There's look no at. There's no point in it. If you're, yeah. They're down four. Uh, sorry, three. Um, with two ends to play, or three. So you, you're you basically ignoring everything. You're all in on the steal. Um, if Siggins gets one or two here, the, the game is essentially over. So... Jed knows that, so he's he's got to play around these center, whatever he has in the center right now. Try and shrink the scoring zone. Nice rock there by Bella. Mike does go signal. He doesn't want that one in the house, so he's ask, probably going to ask Claire to do the hit on it, clear it away. Yeah, again, they just threw this line, um, so they should know it pretty well with that same weight. Um, I think you play the you play the line very tight. And then this here is, of course, to, to take the guard out. The worst thing you can do here is be wide and leave that stone. So. Sean is on it. It does seem to be curling a lot, though. The line's really good. I don't think they got to curl it. I want to get a piece of that. Yeah, it's a great shot from Claire. And Wonderful weight. Keeps a shot around. I mean, this is kind of what you want. If, you, if Judd wants to play the game where he feels like he's all in from the steal, you got to punish him by keeping those shooters around after you clear out their rocks. And, and they're doing a good job of that with those low weight hits. And, uh, you know, it's basically Judd gets the steal here at the game's over. So. They don't teach a slide like that. Mm. <laughs> no. <laughs> I did learn from Mimi a Stevenson up at Rock Creek that if you're fishtailing like that, it could be from weak glutes, and that the glute muscles would want to be what you're working on strengthening to go ahead and uh, reduce your fishtailing effect. Did get shot stone though. Back of the house, not ideal. Yeah, you could come at this literally either way. I'm a little surprised he doesn't just take on the exact same line that he took the last two. Um, but again, it's all preference here. <laughs> Tuck curler myself, there's a lot of reasons you can fishtail. Um, what I've always been surprised about is that he can keep that under control and make shots consistently. But uh, as I said it, here we go. We're going to switch line. I agree with this a lot. Why Why do something new when what's, what you know is working? So, Just a little visual intimidation on that top one, but it, it's truly not even in play. <laughs> you could curl this right now if you wanted to. And that's what they're doing, ladies and gentlemen. Yep, almost knows.
couple options here. Hmm. He could try and hit and roll to the left hmm, to kind of save his game. Hmm. Um, try and sit under all those yellows, and you could be shot hmm, full eight hmm, if the roll is flat enough. Hmm. I, I don't see any benefit in rolling to the right. You've proven that you can get to that any way physically possible. I mean, that block was overburied by half, and this is the other option I would agree with. You have the. I don't know if I see like anything other than the freeze being the right shot to call right now. Well, hit and roll to the left. You're under the stagger. Yeah. Um, you, it's a harder shot for sure. But I would agree. I, I mean, I would argue that a, a dead freeze is equally difficult, especially. Yes, definitely is. I, I think you're probably coming around the right side uh, for the dead freeze, honestly. Um, I think the left's a lot harder. So, hmm. uh, looks like they're opting for it, and they are going to come around the left. Hmm. So, what do I know? Hmm. I do think that you're right because I think that there is a higher chance of over curling, and you know, but maybe they just want to go like side of the button under their guard. Um. No, you've proven that you can't hide there. It's not a legit shot. Not where that guard is. Um, and then my only thought is maybe he's thinking that this was... He just threw the same line or a similar line on this side, so he didn't want to try the new ice on the right. And again, it was a lot of personal preference. And No real right or wrong, especially if you're not throwing the rock. So she's indicating it though. Yeah. Just don't okay, know that this is I ever think, there. Yeah, they're kind of between shots right now. Not completely sure or committed on either one, from what it looks like. Yeah, I just it's fine. I, I get I get what they're doing here. Um, but I, I just, you're asking for a miss, but mm -hmm. I, I don't know that they had anything mm, better. If you were all in on a steal, like it had to be a steal. Mm. Um, mm. I just feel better knowing that I called the shot that they made. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Doesn't mean that it's the right one, but I called it. <laughs> I mean, from the perspective of you're making Mike throw his last. Mm. Uh, True. You could consider it the right one from that perspective. But, mm. Mike does have the opportunity for another four or five and to put this game away. He popped it a bit. Mm -hmm. Claire with the curl. Yeah, with everything else they've done, they've easily been able to get this over. And once again, you're spot on that that guard was pretty inefficient. That'll be handshakes. Mm -hmm. Another five on the board, and we've got handshakes. <laughs> so it does look like Team Siggins is going to go move into second place in the pool. It is tied up on sheet A between... Jukic and Falco. Yeah, Falco had a big end there. Hmm. Yeah. Nice crooked number three. Tie things up. And in the sixth. Mm -hmm. I think that we might see Jukic here try to go ahead and blank the end. You want to come join us? Uh, <laughs> um, where are we at? Oh, are they tied up? Yeah. Yeah, sure. Oh, hold on one second. Uh, she D, they're still finishing out. Mm -hmm. They haven't posted the score yet mm -hmm. on uh, the sixth end. I'll let you know when it's up. Mm -hmm. See Claire Morris trying to come around the center here. Mm -hmm. Set up for the steal or the force. Mm -hmm. A little tight. Line's good now. 
Still tight. Still tight. Gotta go. Lane's good. Lane's good. Room now. Great sweep from the front of house. And good spot there from Claire. Just uh, hair behind center. For the Juke drink. <laughs> You know, the question here is really about when when to go for the two and when to say that it's not there and pull the trigger and play clean for the blank. And um, I think you'll see the results of this end will really depend on if they have that timing right. Yep, yeah, switched over. We're going to see uh, Lance try and come around, sit on top of that red. Put uh, Team Falco in a really good spot to set up the end for the steal or the force. With a tie game here, Simon, what's your usual go-to? Do you like the steal steal or do you like the... Force, try to go for deuce, or what's your? I mean, if I'm, if I'm the Falco rink, I'm going in for the steal uh, because that's also how you're going to get a force. If you don't do that hard enough, then you, it's not that you have to go crazy and do double guards or anything along those lines, but um, you got to at least set up like you're looking to get the steal, clog the center, force play to the middle. Um, and then if you're Jukic, it's I was saying just before you came, yeah. it's it's really that fine line. Like when do you do you feel like it's setting up okay for you on uh, four four two? And as soon as you don't feel like it is, it's, you got to get out and you got to get out quick. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so you're you're kind of asking on some people to make Ooh. some doubles. Hopefully she's okay. Well, yeah, I was watching the last end and that double that he made, he made a killer double that cut him down to three. So, yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. that, was, that was pretty stellar. I like this call. It's an aggressive call. Um, a little tap back. You could sit one, two. You'll have one on the top 12. Um, it, it keeps that force in play. You're not, again, all yeah. in on trying to steal, but you're, it, it keeps the force there. Well, it's pretty early in the end, right? I mean, this is Lance's second stone. Uh, it leaves you plenty of options if we make this shot right here. A little wide. Uh, I, mean, I think the one positive you could take from it is spread your rocks, um, but it, it does leave a really big pocket. Mm. Uh, interesting thing here, though, if Jukic does pull this shot off exactly how he wants, I think it leaves a pretty hit, easy hit and roll. I, I like this call a lot better. Uh, if he's, yeah. if he's calling the hit, I like it better. Mm. Keeps the blank in play, applies pressure. Mm. But no, it looks like he's going for the draw. Mm. Um, mm. Yeah, draw to the pocket. You, I would imagine you see Falco do some sort of heavy draw with the tap, tapping the one that's currently shot back, maybe, and then just kind of sit over underneath it. Well, it depends on how patient Dave wants to be. If, <laughs> He could sit literally in the pocket that this is about to create, and he's in the power position, and oh it's going to be Jukic trying to spend rocks, like sit right between those two, yeah. just like that. And I, you know, force is on. And I'm a little surprised by the call. I understand why they did it. I just, yeah, yeah. I, I, six and one half does another. <laughs> yep. So no, because you make that, it's it makes Dave's job real difficult when uh, if he makes that perfectly. Yeah, it just—it's early in the end to be playing something right to the T line. That's all. That's <laughs> that, very that's fair. all I keep thinking yeah. about. Mm -hmm. And if this weight's right and she's right in that pocket, mm, uh, they're going to be in trouble. Mm -hmm. 
trying to get it to it's curl. It's going to be really close. It's a great shot from Becca. That is. And now you're looking at at least two rocks to remove this stone. So. Yeah. Because the, well, the, the red rock is very much so in there on the left side. The one on the right is very vulnerable. If you could see, you could see the, uh, Jukic make this shot and Dave guard. Yeah. <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. If he feels comfortable enough with that. Um, uh, you know, it clearly depends on what the results are, but... Mm. I'm halfway thinking even if he does make this shot or even if he misses, I think Dave's throwing the guard no matter what. It just depends. It depends on what the results here are. This looks like it's going to overcurl a hair. That was a good sweep from Ryan. Oh, oh. a little unlucky. Wow. <laughs> really unlucky. Uh, here um, comes a guard for sure. He's, he's got options. I could see the double off the back, yeah. Again, keeps that force Just very so, much so in yeah. play. Um, but I could also see that guard. The only reason uh, that, that yellow is too high to double off of, that would be a really thin you double. So could also come and sit in the pocket of those two uh, reds. Oh, it's dude. a really good shot too. Can I just give a shout out to the working man's gloves? Like the leather gloves that Dave Falco wears. <laughs> I mean, how long has he been wearing those things? I mean, it's been, it's gotta be a while. Oh, don't do that. It's ooh, ooh. Okay, it rolls off enough. Yeah. It's a little where they would uh, <laughs> load it for him, but. Yeah. Mm. A little in-betweener shot right there. Yeah, those are the, the Iceman gloves. <laughs> uh, <laughs> gonna work in a cold condition. Yeah, I, no, I, I, <laughs> I get it, yeah. All but, he's missing is the Carhartt sponsorship. Right. Yeah. Then he could, he could be a lifty. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> trying to match it. I mean, I, I respect the game trying to match the gloves to the jacket. You know, for <laughs> <laughs> Which came first. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> now you could try and do some moving some granite here. Yeah, this is 100%. Uh, if he does this, he could actually kick the yellow out the side and lose both of his red backers. Um, the object rock yellow is never going out, but... Uh, yep. Could have tiny. a really good result here. Yep. There it goes, a little float. Yeah. That's a good shot. Good result. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, there I think I you think see that fine line between <laughs> personal preference. trying to re well remove rocks, right? Yeah. You you don't you can't. In Dave's mind, again, the giving up one's okay, but the one thing you really cannot do is, yeah. is two or more, right? No crooked number here. Yeah. So it's how to put pressure and apply pressure, but do it in a manner that's not all in and is still safe. That's mm -hmm. fair. So. Are we calling a timeout? We're getting a double B. Yep. We're getting a double B appearance. There he is. Yeah, I think this is probably a good time to use this. This is a big part of the game yeah. right now. Is there an overhead? Uh, Maybe. There we, is. Don't have, we don't have Culberson here to kind of do our... I think you do the. Uh, yeah, I got you. So my skills are entirely limited.
We've got a real, like, um, <laughs> Zoolander moment here where we're finding out that the files are in the computer. <laughs> and we're trying to deal with that. <laughs> so... <laughs> So we've got a great close-up of that guard. <laughs> uh, you could do it this way. Slide that down. And I would give it to you, but so well now we know for next time. <laughs> I'm great that we uh, we gave you literally nothing there. <laughs> <laughs> it's a learning experience, Simon. The the tens of viewers are yeah. revolting. <laughs> yes, we are we are going crazy. I think electing here the this draw in or corner it got a couple options. I don't mind the corner honestly. I think that's a pretty good shot. Yeah. Uh, that way, if you ever go for nose on it to try and remove that back yellow, you are uh, always jamming. Now, the red always jams on the yellow on the other side, but uh, you're going to be shot after it. So I, I, if that's the call. It's definitely weight dependent. I like doing it even with a little bit of a tap on that yellow to release it so that there's a chance that it can go through the hole. That would be your yeah. perfect shot. They're going hard on the curl. Close. I think it's a pretty good result. Mm -hmm. You'd be happy with that. Mm -hmm. I mean, 100% has to play something off of this. <laughs> I think the question is what? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Absolutely. Here we go. We're getting. Uh, we're putting our skills back in play. We're doing a one. Other one. Mm -hmm. Wrong house. Mm -hmm. Eight. Almost. Mm -hmm. Here it is. Now do it. Mm -hmm. Other way. Mm -hmm. There it is. Look at that. A house. <laughs> so. Mm -hmm. Definitely have a couple options. I, I think you're getting close to the time where you got to move that yellow. Uh, they're looking for the in off on the, the off the red and off their own. That's an interesting call. I don't I don't hate that. Mm. Both teams have about four minutes of thinking time. Just for the record. Yeah, it looks like. Uh, Well, this is the big weight on the nose, or <laughs> or if it's a lightweight hit and roll on the yellow. <laughs> there we go. Thanks, Tony. <laughs> Looks like the lightweight. So I like this call. Gonna suicide off their own. Try and remove that back of yellow. <laughs> Oh, no way. Good shot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. See wow. if we can't get it right back for you again. Yeah, do it. <laughs> you got it? Yeah. There it is. Yeah, difficult spot for Dave. Um, I'm not 100% sure the straight back does it. Mm. Uh, and I also think that that red has a chance of jamming on the left yellow. Mm. The yellow on the top of your screen, I suppose it would be. Yeah. Mm.
With Jukic having a hammer, I think that's what they're discussing now is just like what happens to that. I think that Yellowstone out there touching, you know, just almost touching the forefoot is actually probably going to be crucial to holding them to the minimal score. You'd hate to lose that. The other one. There it is. Nailed it. Had a 50 50 shot. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, the key here is to get rid of at least one of those reds. Uh, yeah. This is tricky because you could you could definitely leave the you could leave them sitting two three yeah or one three for that matter um, which could give up a three spot so it was a really good shot from the Jukic rink good call. Gets underneath. Uh, it's not a bad result. Mm. Man, that is going to be close. I think that's yellow sitting two. Second? Or, well, sitting second and third. Yeah. Um. Can they get the rub off of that? Or just draw the side button? Why wouldn't they just draw the side well, button? Well, I mean, right that's here? what they're about to do. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's it's close enough that they're just going to look at the draw. He just has to touch full four. So. Yep. Mm. Which I think, given that after that first shot at Jukic, I think, you know, how great that shot was, just making him draw a, a fancy draw <laughs> for two points, I think, is a win. And then go in the eighth. Get your two, maybe even three, and then see what happens. Yeah, this is one of those where, you, at this point, before the result, I think both teams would be pretty happy. <laughs> Jukic has a shot at two, and yeah, Falco has got a shot at a force. So, <laughs> yeah, that's also fair. <laughs> Far side of the sheet in suspense. Far side. Oh yeah, there it is. There it is. They are sweeping. Ooh, did they oversweep? I think they had to go for line. Mm -hmm. Other one. Other one. There it is. Ooh, just one. Looks like just one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So having to sweep for line just kind of yeah. mm -hmm. <laughs> hurt them there a little bit. Mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. That'll do it every time. So down one with the drill that literally every team in the world plays. Yeah. <laughs> I think the only game left. Oh no, she D's she D's over there. I'll give it a look real quick. She D is t tied in the eighth. They're in the eighth. Oh, it's oh. skip stones. Okay. Let skip me stones. Switch the camera for us real quick. There you go. Yeah. There you go. Be good. Oh, it was doing it. All right. Sometimes it just it hates itself a little bit. Mm. Tide score, skip stones. Do you know much about these teams? I know Jorgensen's from Detroit. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Says right there. <laughs> Nailed it. <laughs> I'm pretty sure these other guys are Washington, though. Uh, I believe so. Yeah. So we've, uh, we ran into the Washington rink when we were up in Vancouver this year. We didn't play them, oh, okay. um, but we did witness them drink shots. So, oh, hey, <laughs> you know, they're uh, all right in my book. Yeah, uh, fun group of people. <laughs> Enjoyed talking to them. <laughs> so uh, they were excited to be here at this event. Uh, I do know both of these teams are are one and two, and this is basically a, a must-win game. So, For both teams, yeah. 
We have a Jenny Levy appearance from Detroit Curling Club. Coaching Team Jorgensen, that's always fun. I'm assuming this timeout was just a move to save the clock. I, I think guess. so, yeah. Well, I mean, he's got to figure out some place to go. <laughs> but, <laughs> it's yeah. also fair. <laughs> Uh, looks like they had three minutes left, so it's not like <laughs> yeah, not like they're short on time by any means. So, <laughs> probably a <laughs> quick discussion of <laughs> Garter. <laughs> oh no, this is his last. So, it's where is he's freezing? I guess. <laughs> The all or nothing here for. <laughs> Got to make the freeze. I feel like it's got to go. Yeah, at least be shot. Looks like it will be. <laughs> Not exactly what you want, but yeah. again, you make him throw his last. <laughs> yeah, amen so. to that. <laughs> we'll see Greg just peeled off. <laughs> Yeah, I think they'll be all right. Good shot from Greg. Yep. <laughs> and that's how you win the game. Good game, Jorgensen. That's a win. It's like Murray was a winner on sheet C. Uh, Siggins. Siggins was on B. And now back to sheet A. That's right. Yeah, you're good right here. The other one. Oh, yeah. I think we just got to zoom out on the other one. Just zoom out. I think. Uh, it's like impossible to oh, do it yeah. like a little bit at a time, but yeah. Mm -hmm. I dare get any closer, otherwise I'm just going to be right in yeah, on something. Yeah. So <laughs> could be here for hours. Um, this gives us this gives us good depth perception on what the sweepers are doing and everything. I, <laughs> yeah. I, I really appreciate the camera work that you're doing, Simon. It's, it's always a good thing. Yeah, real good cover. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> So, Falco sitting shot. Yep. But Throwing in the a, double. Kind of a vulnerable position. So, I don't know if this is as much a double as it is uh, just a hit and maybe roll corner would be really good. Mm -hmm. Try and work those angles. Mm -hmm. That's a great yeah, shot. There you mm -hmm. go. Good result. Mm -hmm. I just figure, you know, Lance... Lance loves to throw the hits. Like, I mean, if you were asking Lance, like, what his top five hits, for, you know, five, top five shots would be, it would be hit, probably, probably hits. hit, <laughs> hit, downweight hit, and then an upweight feel or something like that. Yeah. Probably. Yeah. I mean, the way the game's gone now with the no tick, um, that second position, which he, he plays uh, for Team Dunham, is it's all just those downweight digs yeah. for the most part. It's a lot more draws. It's kind of... It's really changed the way the position's played. <laughs> lightweight tap there. Overcurled on it. Um, definitely puts Team Jukic in a rough spot. I think we'll see the nose hit here. Yep. They'd be sitting one, two, three, and four. <laughs> nice. 
Nice shot. Really nice shot. shot. Mm -hmm. And covered up. Man. On the good side of things. So we'll try the double. Mm -hmm. Double with a long roll. Mm -hmm. Try and bring play over to the other two mm -hmm. and group them. Mm -hmm. With the weight call, you're never getting rid of both. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I say I watched this team, this Yukich team, play against Sobering, and this gal that plays third for him was making shot after shot after shot. Is quite impressive. Yeah, I believe her name is Melissa. Uh, I know her last name's Simons. Hey, uh, so I remember that because um, we, we, we. Oh, and I just that's the commentator's curse. Co right commentator's there. curse oh, for sure. No. Oh man. Oh, I feel bad. Can don't apologize tell for that. Yeah, don't tell her I said that. Oh no. Oh. Uh, smart call here by Dave. Just unlock these. Mm. Really, if you could almost get yourself a line, <laughs> right? Uh, it'd be pretty good. Mm. Two stones left. Uh, you're gonna see Andy probably have to try some freezes. Mm. He's gonna most definitely have to get creative, force him into some tough shots if this is. Made very well. It's a hair wide. Hmm. It spins back for him. Hmm. Well, we got two in the line. But, oh, we got an extra timeout. Oh. You might, go, if you go down. Yep, there you go. <laughs> getting better. <laughs> yeah, getting better. <laughs> Uh, the freeze is really good. I mean, and it's really not a bad call. I feel like anything hit and roll under doesn't really do any, any good because those other two are just loaded. You're, you're really not getting much of anything out of it. You're, you're, he's just going to play the hit and it's gone. Yep, especially without. Yeah. I, I feel like you really got to try and play that nose freeze. Um, I mean, yeah. Once that was wide, I'm a little surprised that they weren't just continuing to sweep on it and just try and run it to that back eight spot. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, but it was close enough that I could understand where they were on that front. Mm -hmm. This is essentially, if I remember correctly, this is kind of a must win for Jukic here. Yep. Looks like they're going to call that freeze, which I, I think is their only call right now. That's that's a lot of ice. Huh? Yeah, well, I mean, it's on the other side of center. That's true. Um, yeah, being on the inside of that rock doesn't do you any good. No. And uh, I've watched Ryan sweep. Most of that sobering game and some of this, he's pretty impressive. He's a pretty impressive sweeper, yep. so he can carry stone. Scotch heavy. A little heavy. Definitely leaves the hit. Yep. <clears throat> And if I'm Dave here, I, I want to get rid of everything. I'd love to lose all three rocks. That, right, mm -hmm. yeah. You're just leaving. Feel weight. None of it does you any good. No. Nope. I wouldn't even want to hang around nose. No, nope. yep, there just, he goes, right, right on the center. Mm -hmm. and you, give, you make that shot, you give Andy a very small window to – hide behind something that's easily run backable. Yeah. So, um, mm -hmm. this game's definitely been a turnaround. Uh, you know, it certainly isn't over at this point, but I mean, you're, you were looking at a team that was, looked like they were struggling early in the, in the Falco rink and mm -hmm. seemed to have mm -hmm. kind of got their stuff together a little bit later on. It, it <laughs> seemed like that they, uh, 
the way that they were calling the game, that they never lost confidence in the way that they were the outcome of the game, just like trying the more difficult shots. But the um, but the way that they've dialed it in these last two ends has been pretty impressive. And there you go. All three yep. gone. It's a good throw there. <laughs> Every red. <laughs> and again, yeah, it's really the only call I see, the one yeah. that Ryan just pointed out. It's... Try and hide behind that. Mm -hmm. uh, those double yellows. Yeah, make them throw it. Yeah. You kind of almost want to be like a quarter under it or barely under right, it yeah. so that the run's not super straightforward and you kind of get Dave caught between do I just go after the stone itself or the run back. Yeah. Um, I, you know, try and give them those two thoughts. I, I think that's really the most you can ask for in this situation. So. Sounds like Dean Gimmel's bar tab is having its effect. Is yeah. There's a lot of ruckus going on in the, most, most <laughs> in the warm room right now. <laughs> I'm watching Scotty Scheffler chip out from the creek right now. <laughs> wow, what a shot. It's uh, been a tough weekend. Mid-70s, yeah. yeah. Masters weekend, and, the, and curling on. Really uh, difficult to make Mixed decisions here. As this gets <laughs> delivered here. <laughs> Sweepers haven't touched it until Becca does. That yeah, it's is... a little heavy, and I think that's going to be game. That's so. game. Good game from both teams. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. That'll be a tough loss for the Jukic rink. But, mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I think that does it for the 2 o'clock draw. We're back again at, what, 7? Seven? 7, yep. Mm -hmm. I will not be here, but uh, <laughs> join back us on YouTube. Who do we have tonight? <laughs> uh, we are... Roth and Jukic. Roth and Jukic, yeah. Yep. So if you couldn't get enough of this Jukic team right now, you can get them, you can get them at the 7 o'clock against Nina Roth, Tony Roth, and Croy and Shallow Nuremberger. Yeah, I believe so. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. That would be a great team from Wisconsin. So yeah. have fun, enjoy. We'll see you guys at 7. Thank yep. you.